hi guys we're just getting started just so you know there is about a 15 second um, delay so when I say something versus when you see it it's about 15 seconds so um, yeah there you go look at you guys I'm so excited you guys are here and I'm so excited to hang out with you I hope everything looks okay I hope everything sounds okay let me know if there are any issues hello everyone hello to Mallory and Ben and Radhika and Porcupine Pancake and Carla and Harper and Catherine and Purple Yungi Army <laughs> and Mallory hello everybody I hope you're all doing well um, I'm excited to hang out with you Oh, hello, hello, we have a member, is it Dyson, Dyson? Uh, hello, hello, Sheila, hi guys, hello from Spain, <laughs> I hope you're all doing well. Um, it's been an all right morning for me, um, we've been a little stressed the last couple of days, just with life things, but... I really wanted to hang out with you guys, so I'm excited that we get to do that today, and I hope you're all doing well. So I'm really excited today because we're going to be doing like a 30 minute portrait exercise. So this video is going to be a little bit longer than 30 minutes because I want it to be a bit instructional and I want to talk to you guys. Oh my goodness, 182 people, thank you. Um, I um, want to talk to you guys, I want to talk you through the process. So oh, a bit quiet, yeah? I might be able to adjust that. Let me know if this is too loud. Okay, I turned the volume up. Hopefully it's not too loud. If it is, let me know. So we're gonna be doing a 30 minute portrait exercise and I'm really excited. Um, there is a link in the description to the reference image that I'm using today. So if you want to, uh, if you're able to paint along with me, you can find the reference image there. So I'm going to talk about the reference first and how I'm going to be, yeah, let me know if it's too loud now. Um, I think it was better when I turned it down before. Anyway. Um, Good. I, oh, good, 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 good. Yeah, the microphone is literally just, a f it's right here. You can see it kind of poking through. It's just a couple inches from my face. So hopefully it's good. Okay. Um, we are going to go over our reference first. Aw, thank you. And then we are going to sketch and then we're going to paint. It's going to be a quick process and I want to talk to you guys about why I do... Um, quick portraits like this. It's so weird. I feel like my camera looks so much more saturated and then my face looks like overexposed. Oh, it's always overexposed. I don't know why. Um, uh, that's going to bother me. Oh, well. Um, we did this last time too. I swear my, my face isn't actually like five shades lighter than um, the rest of me. <laughs> okay, so all right. Let's take a look at the reference image first. Okay. Again, you can find the reference image in the description if you want to follow if you want to follow along. I want to show this to you guys in my iPad because I have it cropped in Procreate. This reference is just from Pinterest. So this is like not a super high quality image or anything, but this is what we're going to be playing with. Okay. So I've been loving this model so much on Pinterest and yeah it's I think it is trying to white balance off my hair because my hair is so much darker and then it just like does weird things I've been adjusting it for like an hour so <laughs> it's so overexposed sorry guys I've been trying to fix it anyway I've been loving this model on Pinterest I've saved so many pictures of them and I uh, want to talk about this today okay so when I do quick portraits I try to focus on the largest shapes first, and so you're going to be seeing my notifications coming through. Um, so 
The first thing that I noticed about this reference, I'm going to be drawing over top of it. The first thing I noticed about this reference is the angle. So the, the neck angle is at a diagonal. I always love that when we come off of the edge like that at an angle for the neck. So nice. And then we are going to have the head kind of, I like this crop, this whole shape I really like. So we're probably going to be playing with that, the whole shape of the head and the crop. And then I love this angularity of the neck. And then the next big thing that I try to focus on are um, shadows. So oftentimes when you're looking at reference images of models, the images are pretty like the ambient, the lighting is pretty ambient, so you don't get really stark shadows um, with like model photography like this. So that there aren't super dark shadows, but um, most of the time you can count on shadows to be on the inside corners, oh my goodness, of the eyes. So we've got some shadow value in here. Of course, shadow here, like where the eyelids are casting a shadow. We've got some shadows under the nose, the top lip often casts a shadow, and then this bottom shape here that's part of the jaw. And then also we've got this largest shadow shape is probably right here. So, and then of course it's a little bit darker in this area. So I focus on light and shadow when I'm breaking down um, my reference images and then thinking about how darker areas frame lighter areas so the hair is a little bit darker and is going to be framing the face over here and then also on this side we've got this darker hair value over here now all of this hair is darker than um, the face so we're gonna so that's something to keep in mind um, to think about the surrounding values and how that's going to accentuate the portrait itself. So with all of that in mind, I'm going to start sketching. I'm nervous to sketch on a live stream because I feel like sometimes you never know how sketches are going to go. Doing things like this and thinking ahead of time is really helpful. So I'm going to, yeah, so there, this is the mess we made. This is the thinking process. I always think about this stuff. I don't always sketch like this, but I always think about this kind of thing before I get started with, um, uh, the actual drawing painting. I at least think about the shadows, the light, the angle of the head, all that stuff for practice. Okay, so I'm going to put my reference image off to the side and we will start sketching. I'll try to adjust the camera white balance and exposure and all that stuff as we go. Okay. Ah, I'm so glad you guys are here. Yeah, I wanted to do, like, it's fun to hang out, but I wanted to try doing like a more informational almost educational live stream and then if you guys have any questions along the way you can ask me questions and I can answer them now here and then this video will be up on the channel and you guys can come back to it and look at it and hopefully it'll be really helpful so let me I'm gonna the sketchbook because it's so long it's kind of hard to do portrait style sketches like this um, because it's just so much sketchbook and I have to I feel like I have to like hold it so um, I'm gonna try to prop it up a little bit let's see if I can yeah so this is propped up a little I'm gonna try to sketch and let me just ex adjust a little bit here Ooh, wrong way hopefully that's not too dark okay uh, again if you want the um, if you want the reference image, it's in the description. How have I been? Jonathan asks. I've been okay. I'm a little bit stressed, but it's okay. Uh, so many things to be grateful for in my life right now. Um, oh, the stickers on my palette. Um, hold on, real quick. So many things to be grateful for in my life. I'm grateful for my family. Yes, the video will be up on the channel. And um, I'm happy that we are together and safe right now. And then I get to do my job. Oh, look at the little color wheel emoji. Ah, it makes me so happy. Um, the paints and sketchbook I'm using are in the description. Um, the names of them, I didn't add links yet. Um, okay, and thank you for answering questions. Thank you, Porcupine Pancake. Um, the Renaissance watercolors, I would love to get to try them um, someday, that would be great. Okay, all right, so. Uh, this palette, this is my Magello palette. Um, I will list all of these artists, but just for now, just so you guys know. Um, this one is by my friend Becca, who's Caper and Crow on Instagram. 
and this one is by Cassave? Cassave, I think? I can't remember her name, but I will link I'll link all these Instagram accounts. This one is a Jacqueline De Leon, just one of her plant stickers. This one is by Dalton Doodles on Instagram. And this little sticker is actually a label from a board game uh, by Shut Up and Sit Down. Not their board game, but it's like their approval stamp. We love board games and we love Shut Up and Sit Down. They're amazing. They're just, they, they review board games here on YouTube. They have their own website, but um, we love them. So I had to save this sticker when it came on one of our board games. Anyway. Uh, this is my Magello Mission Gold Pure Pigment set, and oh, I hope you're having fun with the Hemi set, Mallory, and we're going to, I didn't need to open this yet, I'm going to close it, we're going to sketch, okay, thank you for being here with me, over 300 people, okay, time to sketch, so I'm going to look at my reference, and I think that today I'm going to try to do the larger shapes first, and then sometimes I'll start with a feature, and then build outward. Sometimes I'll start with the shape of the face. I think that because this neck angle is so important to me, I'll do that first and I already put it, okay. So I want, I have to think about the negative space, about how much space I want there to be um, between, between like the face and the rest of the portrait. So there's not, this is already not proportioned properly. So I, I don't erase a lot when I sketch also. So you'll see like lines that are wrong that I just kind of leave there. I think once you've drawn two lines on a portrait, you've already kind of defined your proportions. So as soon as I set like the thickness of this neck, all of my other proportions kind of have to line up with that, you know? So it's gonna be a working process. Yeah, shut up and sit down is great. Um, Yes, the live stream will be on the channel. Okay, let's see if we can build in a portrait here. So I do lots of measuring while I sketch to think about the distance between certain features. I find that to be a really helpful way to get things right. You guys are gonna see me tilting this more up towards myself too. Um, I have not tried the Schmincke Academy paints yet. I'm also thinking about the difference in angle between the angle of the neck and the angle of the jaw, of this this whole, of the head here. So are these parallel to each other? Is one angled upwards more than the other? I actually think the neck is up a little more. Um, for me, when I'm placing features, I find the easiest features to place first are the nose and the uh, ears, because they help me to, to figure out where everything else goes. So the nose helps me find the center of the face and then the ear helps me know the distance from the nose to the eyes. And we'll talk about that when I get there. So right now this shape is the underside of the nose where that shadow is. The way I paint, or the way I sketch when I'm going to paint is not the same as the way I sketch if I just wanted to draw a portrait. So we'll put the bottom of the ear there. This model has a very full, um, upper lip. It's really beautiful. So I'll get that rough shape in. I used to do eyes first because I always thought um, eyes were the most important and they are but now I feel it's more helpful to do them last because then I know they're in the right place. Do I always freehand my sketches? Yes. Um, be, I used to I don't know I just I struggle with the grids. I know that the grids would help me to get better proportions um, but I, I love doing it this way, so I do it this way. <sighs> okay, I can see I've got like the bottom half of a head so far. How long does it normally take to sketch? Just a few minutes. Um, this one is gonna, you know, this one's gonna vary because I'm talking, but um, I'm gonna put the top of the ear in here just so I can get an idea of where to place the eyes because the, the part where the ear comes down and connects to the head here, a straight line across is going to be the center of the eyes. And then a straight line down from the outside of the nostrils on either side is gonna be the inside corner of the eyes. So sometimes I do these like um, lines to get the features placed in the right spot, especially when the, um, the the face is not, you know, at a straight on view. 
it's really helpful. So I want to be careful not to have one eye more open than the other. That's something I do all the time. And symmetry isn't necessarily the goal because no face is symmetrical. And I think symmetry can make a piece look really flat and kind of boring. So having, even if you're seeing a straight on view, having it be a little asymmetrical, I think is really helpful. Can I do a live stream about making a palette ourselves? Um, that could be fun, like putting together a palette of, of paints. Um, I'll keep that in mind for the future. I want to think about the whole eye socket when I place the eyebrows. So I'm not going for another, Im Im another really important point is that um, I'm not going for a perfect likeness here. So I'm going for a similar angle of the head and some of the features, but the face itself is just going to look different. It just won't be exactly the same, which is fine with me. Yep, yeah. You don't just want to go, okay, this is what an ear looked like, this is what an ear looks like, this is what an eye looks like, because then you're going to draw everything the same every time, and if you're making mistakes, you won't be improving. So I want to instead be breaking things down into geometric shapes um, so that I can get, so that I can better, like, observe my reference, and also I can just um, more accurately build a face. And I, I like to, I've said this a lot of times before, but I like to think of sketching as more like sculpting than drawing. Um, and I'm, I'm not the first person to say that by far, but I, that concept when I learned that helped me so much, like so much. Um, I also used to be really careful with not putting too much pressure on in sketches, like I used to try really hard not to push too hard because I wanted to lighten my sketch so you couldn't really see it uh, when I was done. I feel like these eyes are too small. Hold on. Um, let's see. And I need to see where the outer edge of the nose is in relation to something else. So that's one thing that's really important is connecting the dots. So if I want to know how far out this nose should go, it's really, really help. It's really, really helpful to measure it with something else to go. What's the distance between from here to here? What's how, where does this line up with something else? So it lines up kind of with the inside of the pupil on this side. So I can go, okay, that's there. And then the this needs to come back further. I think these eyes are too small, and I think stylistically I want them to be bigger anyway. I don't want to think of anything as being too precious that I can't just erase it and start over. Um, my, on my current schedule, I'm live streaming about once a month, and um, that's about what I can handle right now, because I do have a lot of other things that are that I'm working on between YouTube and Patreon has been growing. I've been having so much fun spending time on Patreon. So um, once a month seems to be about how often I can sustainably live stream. Oh, how is my animal coming? How is my island coming along? Um, in Animal Crossing. Hold on just a moment. Um, it's been good. I haven't actually, this is going to sound bad, I haven't played Animal Crossing much for the past few weeks. Um, I checked in on my villagers the other day for the first time in almost a month. <laughs> um, uh, I've been kind of enjoying other games lately. I, I know I don't even have to explain what other games, because I've been talking about Dragon Age like non-stop lately. I go through cycles with games, you know? Um, the sketch is almost done, to be honest, and then I'll move into painting, and a lot of the work will happen when we paint. I'm trying to see this. I know right now the eyes look bigger to you guys than they actually are. So I need to get some pupils in here. 
that's another thing that can affect how the eyes look. For me, that was one issue I had for a long time was before I put in um, the pupils, the eyes looked good, but then once I put the pupils in, the eyes were like way too big. That used to happen to me all the time. So I'm just building in a few geometric shapes that are gonna help me. Okay, so the basics of the face are done now. And then I just need to think about any other outer line geometric shapes I want to include, like if I want to include like the shape of the hair, you know, in a few individual strands, not triangular, please. So uh, that's just some things I need to think about. Yeah, you're right. This ear is way, way, way too close. Thank you for pointing that out. Once I made the eyes bigger, that got way too close and that's helpful. So I can draw a diagonal line out from here to the corner of the jaw to try to get that more accurate and then bring that ear way back. You're totally right, thank you for that. Um, I think that's better. A lot of the ear's not gonna show, but something like that is a little bit closer. I might have dropped it down too far now, but that's okay. We're not going for perfection. The entire point of this exercise is practicing and getting ideas out a little bit quicker. That's not how everyone will do it every time, but Something like that. Okay? All right, so we'll do something like this, just a loose sketch. And then I also wanna lay in, th keep in mind some shadow shapes. So I'll make some darker lines for some darker areas. And then the larger shadow shape under the neck is important. I want to emphasize this neck angle, like that. Okay, I think that this will work. Oh, happy birthday to your friend, Shannon. Oh, uh, yeah. Paintings make such a nice gift. Okay, so real quick, I just want to make sure by measuring out that I don't get this. I'm still worried about that ear. So if I put the hair there, I'm just going to erase this ear again. And bring the jaw back and place the ear a little bit further out. Something like that. Does that look alright to you guys? I think the neck's a little bit too skinny. I'm gonna bring the neck a little further out, have it curve back like that. Something like that. Still really skinny, but that's just I think if we I think if I extend the body shape down a little that might help. Something like that. This curve is a little too curvy. I'm not going for perfect anatomy here, I just want to get the idea in. I think I'm happy with this. Okay. Alright, so now I think I'm going to keep this a little bit propped up to paint. Yeah, thank you. I think that, that everything's a little bit more balanced now. I might have to reposition you guys just a little bit. All right, I have my water containers like right up here. So hopefully those won't be in the way. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So I always start with not the deepest, darkest values necessarily, um, but still some sections of shadow. I feel like this um, nose shape is pretty weak the way I did it, so I'm going to work in some shadows. This is also an important time to start determining colors. I by default gravitate towards reds, like I, I just love to put reds everywhere. <laughs> so. Um, like when I print prints and things like that, it's always my red, like my magenta ink cartridge that goes empty first. Like it happens all the time. All right, so this is a pretty light value that I have here, but I'm gonna go ahead and start laying it in, in this shadowy section. I'm so excited to start building this. So I'm gonna make a little bit of adjust an adjustment and grab maybe the cerulean blue and cool down this side of the shadow so that it can be warmer over here. 
and then I'll use this cooler desaturated color down here. Still kind of like a purplish brown. So I'm starting with um, areas with a bit more shadow, but I want a little bit more warmth here on the lower lip. So I'm gonna mix a warmer value for here. If you guys have any questions, let me know. I'm always happy to answer questions as we work. Um, I try to, if I want to lay in even just shadow values like this, think about shifts in temperature as I work. So I want to cool this down with some purple for the shadow underneath. I also like to connect as many shadow shapes as I can for the shadow underneath the lips. Um, an interesting thing here is we've got a hard line where it curves up for like this chin dimple, chin button, but then the edges soften on the shadow as it curves up here, like back into the jowls and the... And then we'll bring a shadow down across, almost as if, as if the figure is being lit from both sides. Something like that. That's a good start. Uh, I'm using an Etcher Lab cold press sketchbook. I listed the sketchbook and the paints, just the, the names of them, in the description. So you can find the specific names of those. Oh my goodness, two years since you've last seen my channel. That's so long. Welcome back. I'm glad you're here. Um, I now want to work on knocking back a, a bunch of white. So I'm going to mix like a kind of neutral color that I can use to just establish the, the broad light and dark areas. Some questions, some questions. What paper do I recommend? Oh geez, um, I have a video about my favorite watercolor papers. Um, it's old, er, but I think still pretty accurate. You can check that out if you're interested. 100% um, cotton papers are pr usually pretty reliable for the most part. Um, Arteza is 100% cotton cold press paper has kind of been like become one of my favorites. I really like that paper. Like it's just reliable and affordable. I'm I think that I put this eye this eye like drifted out a little bit. Like it went back some. That's okay. Mm. Home of the Coconut asked about granulating colors. Brands with granulating colors. Um, I like granulating colors. I'm not an expert though at all on granulating colors. I know like Daniel Smith has lots of granulation. Um, the Roman small water colors, there's some beautiful granulating colors there. I, I will say that already I'm painting a little bit slower than if I was doing this, um, you know, on my own. Cheap watercolor paper recommendations. Hmm. That's a tough one. <laughs> uh, I would check, actually, Sometimes on AliExpress you can find um, like affordable cotton papers, like the Baohong watercolor paper. The price varies depending on where you live, but um, sometimes you can get that one relatively affordably and they have like a cotton one. I, ha I don't think I like the cold press one very much, but the Baohong uh, hot press watercolor paper is one of my favorites. 
I think they call it fine grain. <laughs> I start with shadow values because it helps me to better see the structure right away. So it helps me to put the, the subject in three dimensions quicker. Um, I know some artists will start with lighter washes and then slowly work darker. And even my values that you see here, all of this stuff will get darker. But I'm able to see my light source way, way sooner and way easier if I start with shadow values. And I can start to establish like base colors and um, things like that. So like figuring out what my primary colors I want to use are. I might bring you guys in a little bit closer soon um, if I decide to focus on like one specific area. This is fun. How are you guys doing? I hope that you're staying safe and enjoying family if you have them nearby. I've been really enjoying getting to be with my family. So I'm so, I feel so fortunate, you know. Um, it's hard for me sometimes, this is about the painting now, to like not be afraid to cover up certain areas when I know that they're not the lightest color. Um, because if I don't cover up those slightly darker areas, the lighter areas you can't, like, can't even see, tell that they're lighter. So it's important. Like this section of the cheek is lighter than the rest. So I have to knock everything else back or you can't see it. All right, so I've got some really light values in now. These are the Magello Mission Gold Pure Pigment set. So I'm going to come in uh, closer so I can work on the eyes. I'll bring you guys in a little bit closer. Hold on. Hold on a second. Wait, 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 Okay. I need to figure out how to do this without just blocking the, um... I could've just zoomed in, I guess. <laughs> without blocking the webcam. All right, and then we'll turn this down a little bit. There we go. Okay. So now I want to start to focus on some darker areas, specifically. I've been pulling out some of these more granulating colors today, like some blues with like cerulean in them. Let me know if the video is too bright as well, because I know it looks different on YouTube um, than it does in like my OBS, like my streaming software. <laughs> the Canton Montval watercolor paper. I know some people really, really love that paper. I do not. I don't like it. I, I think it, um, it lifts very easily and I have trouble uh, doing pretty much anything on it. But, but that being said, the, the Canton... Oh, I don't know how to pronounce it. There is a Canton paper that I love and it's like one of my it's like one of my favorite hot press papers. Canson has a lot of stuff. I think a lot of people hear the name Canson and they think of the Canson XL watercolor paper, which is pretty cheap. Um, I think it's perfect to get started on. But um, sometimes people think of that and go, this is Canson, but they do a lot. They have a wide variety of paper types and qualities, I think. Mm, is the video overexposed? Here, I'll adjust it. Oops, wrong way. 
Okay, so that should be balanced now. I hope that's not too dark. One thing I've been really enjoying lately is darkening the inner, like the thickest part of the eyebrow, and then fading it out towards the edges, you know, letting the most intensity exist in that deepest part where there's like the most, the highest density of hair, and then softening out. That's been fun. So with this practice, um, when I'm doing these short portraits, I pretty much always use just one um, brush. So as you can see now, the values that I put in earlier are looking a lot lighter just because I've put in something that is comparatively darker. So interesting how that happens. I actually got a lot of granulation going on here. I didn't have an idea of what colors I was going to use before I started painting. Um, so, one thing that I've had to kind of admit to myself or allow myself to do with when painting is that the white of the eyes are very, very rarely, pretty much never, just white, you know. Um, you can knock that value back and it'll help. I do not know the brand name of this brush. It's from AliExpress. I believe, like in my most recent video, like the Roman Small video, you can find uh, the set that I got this brush in. Another good tip when you're trying to establish lighting that looks effective is when a shape is curving like towards the light. So for example, this inner corner of the eye, there's a lot more shadow, and then as it curves out this way, there's more light. So by adding more warmth to the value as it gets lighter, it reinforces that idea of um, light and just can make that whole, that whole thing more effective. I'm just trying to establish the, like the shadow area. These colors are totally not what I expected. I don't know what I did expect, but I love calligraphy brushes because they are expressive and they oftentimes can keep me from being too precise and they encourage me to loosen up and I love doing all of those things when I paint. I love loosening up and being more expressive and using calligraphy brushes makes that easier. I like that. I like that they hold a lot of water, but if you learn to control them, they can be very versatile and you can do, um, you can get fine details and you can um, cover larger areas. And oftentimes you can do like everything you need to do with one brush and I think that's really valuable. I'm not always paying a lot of attention, you may notice, to the specific color that I'm mixing. It's more ab about just how the color is different from the color that I put down before it. I keep wanting this one red color to be more orangey, and then it's not, and I need to pay attention. So I'm adding more warmth to this corner of the eye because this side of the face is um, getting more light. So I need to be really careful now because a lot of the area of the face is really wet. Um, so if I keep fiddling with some areas before they're dry, I'm just going to make a bigger mess. So instead, we're going to work on the hair and the background. I'm happy that there are a lot of um, BTS fans here. I'm so, I'm so glad you guys are here. Um, you guys are just totally going to flood the chat with your biases. <laughs> Jeez. Okay, let's see. I'm, I'm trying to think if I want to have the same background color as my reference image or if I want to let it change. Over 500 viewers, wow. Thanks guys. Let's experiment with keeping something similar. So, something like a reddish like a burnt reddish brown color. Let's try it. Is this one more orange? What's this color? What is this? Yeah, that's orange. 
What does that look like? I'm just gonna... Hmm. So this is the first time I'm dipping into my brown paint. Even though I've been mixing some brownish values, Aw, Rachel, thank you for the super chat. Wow. Thank you so much. That's so sweet. I appreciate it. All right. So now I want to establish like a slightly darker than mid-tone value. That's going to help me a lot to get my other stuff done. Um. See, see, now I don't have to switch brushes, and I can just keep using the same brush I've been using with a lot more water to color, to cover like a larger area. And then, yeah, I might have to use my heat tool to um, dry things off. How do I know when a piece is overworked? Um, I know it's overworked if I'm spending a lot of time trying to fix the same detail and it's not getting better, you know? I did just cut this head a little bit too small and I see that now, but that's okay, we can fix it with the hair. Um, um, yeah, if I'm, if I'm trying to fix a piece and it's not getting anywhere, like I feel like it's not, maybe, maybe I can't even tell that it's getting worse, but if it's specifically not getting better, I need to be really careful about the possibility of having overworked it. I'm mixing up a neutral color now with a brown and blue to get something deep and neutral and dark. I want to put it on the hair, but I know that my background values are super, um, super wet. That's okay. We'll let it bleed a little. So I'm going to lay in this darker value. And I'm, I'm still kind of sculpting here, so I'm still outlining the neck, outlining the ear. I can, if I'm careful, I could probably get some curlies in. This is one thing the calligraphy brush is great for too, it's like super loose shapes and values, and then I can just blend the edges. I'll take that up too. This is fun. Oh yeah, when you feel like your faces all look the same, I definitely know what you mean. Um, I have gotten to the point where I tend to favor particular bone structures, so I like uh, certain angularities in the face, and that can be from a, var a variety of face types and different types of people, but um, I definitely know what you mean. When I'll, but if you're specifically trying to learn about a variety of faces and you feel like you're having a hard time, somebody had mentioned it before, when you're studying references, try not to um, go, okay, this is where the eye goes, I know what an eye looks like, and then draw what you think an eye looks like. You have to actually look and see the shapes as, ge see the features as geometric shapes, and that's really helpful for um, just turning off that part of your brain that goes, I know how, what an eye looks like, and then you draw what you think an eye looks like. This is really hard, this part, by the way, like trying to get the hair shape right um, without, because like if I get the hair shape wrong, it can totally like alter the atmosphere of this. Mm. What happened? Oh, we're going to have some lag. Sorry, guys. I'll do my best to fix it. Hopefully there's not too much lagging going on, just let me know how it goes. I know it got a little weird there for a second. Mmm, the stream quality just like plummeted. Let's see. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
my son Shark shoot on the transatlantic cable. That's funny. Uh, let me know how everything's looking. It looks okay to me right now. But, aw, Suki, thank you for the super chat. You didn't have to do that, Suki! <gasps> ah, okay. Yeah, the lag is hitting. I'm doing my best to uh, adjust it, though. Okay. Yeah, Lago Burper. <laughs> okay. Stream is fine for me. Okay. Let me know how it is now. I think it's okay right this second. There was just like this weird drop and now it looks like it's back up to normal. Okay. I'm glad. It's so crazy. We've already been streaming for like... 45 minutes and this is supposed to be like a 30 minute portrait, but that's okay because I wanted to talk to you guys and explain the process and stuff It's okay. Oh yay. I'm glad. Okay, good All right, so now actually believe it or not 90% of this painting is done and now it's just a matter of fine-tuning trying not to overwork it and um, getting in our deepest darkest values so that it reads as a painting. I love this brush, but it does shed sometimes. Okay, I actually need to use my heat tool to dry some of this area so I can keep painting. It's gonna make some noise, I apologize. Um, I'm gonna turn the volume down for just a moment so I can turn this on. It won't be off though. So you're probably still gonna hear this, I apologize. I'm not trying to um, dry the whole thing, but just enough so that I can keep painting without disrupting stuff. Why do I always paint the same face? Do I always paint the same face? I do tend to um, prefer a certain like look to facial features, so I think that my art oftentimes looks similar, but I'm okay with that. I'm all right with um, things looking similar. I don't really paint um, to I just I just paint because I like to paint and I paint how I like to paint okay we're adding darker things how will I know if I overshot the mark and things are too dark um, I will know one are there any white values left and one thing that can be helpful to stop yourself from doing that is to take a picture of your painting while you're working and put it in black and white. Like just turn the saturation all the way down and um, look at your values. You know, do you still have a nice range of values? Does everything look very light? Does everything look very dark? That can be really helpful. I do think this will be the last layer of paint on this one. Oh, thank you, Steffi. I'm glad you don't think that um, they're all the same. Even if they are, I'm really happy with um, the kind of things I've been doing lately. It's been a lot of fun for me. Um, now we're going to start to see the features pop out a bit more. That's the plan anyway. I sometimes find it enjoyable to make the two eyes different. So this eye over here is actually catching a bit more light, so I want to leave a bit of like lighter value in that one. I'm keeping the, the paint cooler, a bit more purple near the inside of the eye in here, and then a little bit warmer, a bit more red around the outside. Oh, 
Ooh, a Dragon Age question. Uh, do you have to start from the beginning or can you start with Inquisition? You can definitely start with Inquisition. Um, in the Dragon Age games, you're able to import your save files from previous games. Um, and that does affect some story aspects as far as who's where sometimes and things like that. But I, I would recommend playing all three of them. But if you're like super stoked about Inquisition and I, that's understandable, it's a great game then you could jump in. I think that they're all worth playing. But if you really want to start with Inquisition, I think you can. Okay. Let's see. Cause see now my um my hair values are looking pretty light again. Now one thing I will say is like using somebody asked about what using a mop brush feels like. And using a mop brush is different from using a calligraphy brush, which is what I'm using. Um, a calligraphy brush like this, this one specifically, some of them are more like mop brushes. This one's pretty springy. So um, it, it um, springs back to like a fine point, which allows me to do, you know, strokes like that, and then immediately go in and do like more detailed stuff because it springs back to a um, some semblance of a point. With a mop brush, they're a bit softer generally, and they don't spring back to their original shape as immediately. So they're great for covering larger areas. Um, but if you're looking for a completely versatile brush that's going to do everything for you at once, um, you know, mop brushes are better alongside like a suite of other things. Um, okay, that looks pretty good. Yeah, I do want to get my core watercolors out again. I've actually, I haven't been using them much because I've been really enjoying watercolors that stay where I put them. So uh, paints like my White Knights paints, where I can set them in a place and they don't spread a ton, even if the, excuse me, even if my paper's wet, they kind of stay where I put them. And the core watercolors are much more free flowing and they're gonna travel so it just takes a shifting a shift in mindset to be able to enjoy them to the fullest because they do just work differently, you know. I'm taking my darkest value now and just placing it in a few places. You don't like you wouldn't always maybe even wouldn't normally use the same dark value for every shadow, but this is just a practice thing. Okay. Okay, I'm pretty close to done. One thing that I really like that brings together a painting is when you add a little bit of gouache, like that white highlight, you know? Ooh, that was way too much. This color is so saturated. This It's like an orange pigment, like PO73, maybe? And it's, you get, it packs so much punch, you grab a tiny bit of it, and it's like everywhere. They, yeah, the White Knights paints, they just don't spread as much as others do. That's not to say they don't move at all, um, but compared to like um, core specifically, the core paints, they, they travel. Um, M. Graham is another brand of paints that kind of stay where you put them a little bit more. Those paints are so vibrant. I should get those out again soon. Okay. I've got some mess down here. That's okay. For me, I it, it would stress me out too much to try to make this bottom area like perfect. I actually wish it, I hadn't made it quite so dark because it um, detracts from the darker values in some of the other areas. My paints are shifting a lot, so like I keep dropping in a super dark value. Oh, and then it lightens as it dries which is super common for watercolors. Some brands do it more than others. Some papers do it more than others. Um, it, it happens. I'm being really messy with my color mixing right now. If 
you guys have any other questions, now would be a good time to let me know. I know you are asking, how do you deal with criticism that is less than constructive? So if somebody is specifically not trying to be constructive with criticism, um, you can ignore them. <laughs> uh, really, if they're trying to start a fight, then only reply to them if you want to start a fight. That's something that's been really hard for me because I do take comments very personally, usually. So that's hard for me. Um, but if somebody wants to start a fight, then that's what, you, that's what you will be doing no matter what you say to them if you choose to reply, is starting a fight. Uh, let's see. How many layers can you use? Oh my goodness, depending on how gently you layer with watercolors, like an infinite number. I know that's not exactly true. Like you can't actually just keep layering and layering. Ev eventually your paint will give out with you, on you. But I'm pretty heavy handed with my layering. I'm not very delicate. Um, so I'm more limited in my layering than somebody who um, has a gentler hand might be, you know? Okay. I think I will dry this again and grab my white gouache, pop that in, and then call it done on this one. It's not super detailed, it's just for fun, it's just to loosen up and be quick. Hopefully you guys have found this process inspiring. Um, how do I deal with art block? Oof. Um, I think art block is a weird, weird term to try to describe or to define because I think it's different for everybody. Um, I don't, I've actually, as the years have passed, I don't really think that art block is just a thing that happens to everybody. I think it, it, there's always a reason, and it's, it's like calling every skin disease leprosy. Um, it's not really accurate. I think we call it all art block, but sometimes it could be lack of motivation, or um, your eyes are observing better than your hands are executing the skill and you need some time to learn. You could be stuck with the same subject matter over and over again. I think that it really, identifying the problem is really helpful. Yeah, I know what you mean. Kim asked about approaching non-human subjects. I think one thing that applies to everything, um, but is especially helpful when you're changing up the subject, is try to break it down into the basic geometric shapes and um, specifically with animals, watch them move. I think we look at pictures too often, but um, looking at uh, watching an animal move in a video, if you can, or if you can see the video, or if you can see the animal from life, is really helpful for understanding the anatomy a little bit more. I don't think you have to be a master, but um, yeah. Wow, look how overexposed that is. That's crazy. Even though I changed it ahead of time. Sorry, guys. Um, favorite blues or reds to have in a palette? Ooh, uh, I love like PR254 is a good red. It's called different things by different brands. Sometimes it's called like Pyrrole Red or Naftal Red, um, but it depends on the brand. So different brands call it different things. And um, blues, I've been really into Thalo Blue lately and like Cerulean Blue, those like greener blues. I've been having a lot of fun with those. People have been asking about homemade paints. I haven't made paints in a long time because I have a lot of homemade paints right now and I'm not doing anything with them. I mean, I'm using my set, but I'm not selling any paints right now. I don't have time to sell paints right now. And I don't want to just keep accumulating more paints that I'm not able to share with you guys at the moment. So how do I get my tones, like specific skin tones? It's all just a matter of mixing and um, letting the skin tones be subtler shifts of one another instead of creating a new mix every time. Like this section of my palette, I've been working in this same section of my palette for the whole painting and just been making adjustments. There's a lot of different colors here. It's warmer over here. It's cooler over here. There's more brown up here. So I'm grabbing from different places in my palette and um, letting the colors be subtler shifts of one another. And that helps a lot to keep a cohesive color palette and um, you can always, you know, desaturate colors by mixing the complement in. Do my kids paint with me? Yes, they do. Uh, 
they, this is a long table, so sometimes I'll set them both up here and we'll all paint together. That's a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, oh, thank you. Lottie says, I've changed. Yeah, it has, I, I'm really happy that it's gotten, that I've changed so much. Do you choose colors from references or do you choose moods? Both. Sometimes I will like exaggerate the mood that's already present um, in the colors of the reference. And I'm interested in making a Discord server. I would love to do that. If you guys are interested in Discord, I try to not spend a ton of time like on the computer all the time or on my phone all the time. So that's kind of why I've hesitated about um, making Discord in the past. But if you guys are interested, maybe I will do that. If you guys would like that. Okay, I'm going to grab um, my white gouache so I can do some little highlights in the eyes real quick. Okay. And in case anyone is curious, I am in my pajamas and I have been in my pajamas all day. <laughs> 500 people here? Really? <gasps> you guys. So many people. Thank you. Oh my goodness. Okay. Biggest painting I've ever done was a full sheet of watercolor paper, which is... I don't know what, is, what size. Oh, what size a full sheet of water? But I didn't finish it. It was too big. <laughs> okay. I'd like to do something big again, but I need to rethink how I would approach it. Give me just a second. Okay, someone asked if I dried this painting around um, along the way, and I did do drying. If I wanted to work and continue working in one specific section, I did dry it along the way, um, which is pretty obvious now because I just did it. Here, let me bring you guys in a little closer so we can look at the eyes together. Okay. Sorry, my camera's so overexposed. I've been trying to fix it, and it's just so overexposed. Okay. The heat tool is from Amazon. I will. I can put a link after this live stream is done. Like when the video goes up on YouTube, I'll make sure that there is a, a link to the heat tool. Okay, we're gonna put these highlights in. Are there actually highlights on the reference image? Not really, but we're gonna put them in. Oh, that's still wet. I can't really see like a... Alright, that's good. And then just what I'm going to do here, I'm going to put this here, but I'm going to fade it out. I don't actually want a ton of highlights on this one. That's all. This one's super simple. And then just kind of blend this section so it's not actually, it'll dry lighter then. I just want it to look a little bit lighter and pretty fuzzy. Maybe the same thing over here too. All right, something like that. Any pastel colors? I don't really, as far as watercolors, I don't really use pastel watercolors. Um, Oftentimes pastel watercolors are mixed with white and um, and pigments mixed with white are diff more difficult to mix with. You can always just lighten things and um, with water, you know, and get to get a lighter color. Gouache is a different story. Oh, hey, uh, Visual Mind is here. She has an awesome YouTube channel, you guys. I think, and hit 25,000 subscribers not too long ago. Congratulations. Check out her channel. 
is the heat tool better than a hair dryer? I think so. Yeah, and it's exactly what you said. The heat tool puts out more heat and less air. So it um, mixes it or it dries the painting instead of pushing everything around. So yeah, I like the heat tool. It's an embossing tool. So if you work with like embossing powders or anything like that, it's the same tool. That's what I'm using. How do you keep your art from being more too stylized? Um, study reference and give yourself time to learn the anatomy. That's super important. Like study like what the skull looks like. Cause when I when if I draw if I was to draw a face without reference right now, you guys would be like, wow, that looks totally different. Because without reference, my, my faces do get a lot more stylized. Um so sometimes I want that and sometimes I don't. Oh no, I'm fiddling with it, I'm fiddling with it. I need to stop. Okay. Thank you guys so much for coming to hang out with me. I think we are just about done. It's been over an hour. So we've been here um, twice as long as <laughs> my I was originally intended to, well, not. Anyway. Yeah, if you add white to watercolors, they'll become more opaque. So with gouache, that's usually, that's cool. Um, but with watercolors, it makes it more difficult to layer. So thank you guys for coming to hang out with me. It's been so much fun. Um, do I watch anime? Sometimes, yeah. I like corny, cheesy animes. So, Orin High Host Club, love that. Your Lie in April, good. Monthly Girls Nozaki-kun, great. <laughs> it's just corny animes. I Usually that's why I watch anime, is for something corny like that. Have I tried painting buildings? Yes. I'm, I love Mateusz Urbanowicz. Um, he's Polish, but he lives in Japan. He's fantastic. And I have an original of his on, on over there. Um, he inspired me to want to paint buildings. Okay. I'm going to go. Thank you guys for being here. <laughs> I hope you have a fantastic day. And I will talk to you guys later. The stream will be up on the channel soon. If you have any other questions, you can leave a comment, and I will try to get back to them. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye, guys.